Welcome to another edition of the Mailbag from the workshop this time. And we've got a fair few uh, comments to get through. But before we get through those today, normal parish notices. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not? <laughs> Hit the subscribe icon. If you want to be notified when this sort of content or other content hits the channel, that's the bell icon is the one you should be hitting. If you like the content of this video or any other video you watch on the channel, give it a thumbs up. It really helps. Um, become a member of the TMTG community. The address is down there, as are the Instagram and Facebook pages, or Instagram and Facebook pages, whichever way around it is. Um, Go over there, you'll see all the shenanigans of the channel are notified on those platforms. But now back to the video. This one comes from Visiotech. In response to upgrading the Roland TR8 firmware to 1.61, a video I did in July 2020. And he writes, hey pal, I talked to Roland support via email. And they said they will grant access to the 7x7 expansion to all new customers until the end of the year. That means everyone can buy a lifetime key till the end of this year, and they will announce it soon on the official Roland website. Greetings. Um, so that is great news. Well, I suppose it's great news, unless you've already bought the 7x7 pack. But it's kind of what they should be doing, if I'm honest, because you've discontinued support for the TR8. Um, in favour of the TR8S. So really, you know, you should be giving that 7x7 expansion pack away to everybody who's stuck with you on the TR8 um, platform. So um, it's really good news. I had heard on the grapevine in certain user groups that this was being mentioned, but nothing official was coming from Roland at that point in time. And I thought when 1.61 went in, I thought that is the final patch if i'm honest i'm not sure it is the final patch but i thought it was and the information i had said that the final patch will contain the 7x7 pack this one comes from adrian newins nuns nuns n-u-n-e-z nuns i suppose that will be pronounced you know, guys, I'm the world's worst at pronouncing people's names. Um, Adrian, I can get away with. Um, and this is in response to setting up the Roland MX-1 for your environment, a video I did way back in January 2016. Uh, and Adrian writes, what is the main difference between this and the Soundcraft F6, FX16II mixer? To new to producing and finally making the decision to get a mixer and an audio interface after. Um, but I'm stuck in terms of connectivity, especially with plugins, doors, beside having 12 instruments, hardware. I wouldn't like to be switching cables back and forth to play one synth. Please, can you help? Of course. Um, I've said it many, many times. The MX-1 is not a mixer. Yes, it is a mixer but it's not a mixer in the true sense of the word mixer. And the MX-1 and the Soundcraft are really completely different beasts. Um, the Soundcraft is more of a traditional style mixer, okay? Uh, it has some built-in effects, it has a USB interface, but it only presents two channels of audio via USB. It's the same as my Mackie mixer that I use for this sort of stuff. Okay, I only need a couple of channels. In fact, I need a stereo feed um, for most of the stuff I do. It works fine. It presents it to the computer. Great. Um, and when you plug it into a door, effectively, you are just presenting two channels of audio. So really, you either record everything as it is, or you record separate instruments. But it is really re useful for recording instruments one at a time. The MX-1, on the other hand, has a preset stereo channel for each input, pretty much, on the back of it. Although you 
one, two, three, and four are all mono inputs, but you can tie the two channels together, so one and two and three and four together, to give you two stereo inputs. And it gets presented up to the computer in that fashion. So for each input on the back of the MX-1, whether it be a USB, DAT, um, or via the quarter inch jacks, or the three eighth inch, inch um, that comes in the back of it, it presents those up to your computer effectively as each channel on the mixer. But it's not a mixer in terms of like the Soundcraft where you've got either a balanced input or you've got line inputs, quarter inch jack inputs. The MX-1 is limited in terms of you can only have two stereo quarter inch jack feeds, four USB feeds. A digital interface feed you know it's it's all these different types of interfaces on the back of the mx1 um but you know that's kind of where the mx1 is this difference it's like a weird unit you can apply effects to the each one of those channels coming in but you can't record those effects if you're in the wrong mode it records it dry you know, so it, I've always said the MX-1 is kind of own, is aimed at the sort of um, the gigging musician, DJ, you know, type artist that wants to be able to sort of plug in their, their drum machine and their vocoder and their bass line and, you know, th put some effects on it and thump it out to the front of house. I've always said, in my ter in terms of recording, my opinion is you're better off with an audio interface than an MX-1 and a, a mixer. A mixer is great for this style of environment or live environment. It's not really great for doors. Uh, and the MX-1, well, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting conundrum, isn't it? People bought the MX-1 thinking it would do lots of different things. And really, I don't think it does... It kind of does the live environment well, but it doesn't do the recording environment well. That's my opinion, um, and I've had that opinion for a number of years. If you want to buy a mixer that's going to plug into a door, then you're going to end up putting your hand in your, deep into your pocket, and you're going to end up with something like a Behringer Wing or an X32 that actually sends multiple channels down the USB to your door so that you can actually record um, multiple instrument sets in one go but you're not going to do it on the Soundcraft. So I think it's horses for courses. You've got to decide what you want to do with these things. I bought the MX-1. I bought it for a reason and found it didn't work for that reason. I still got the MX-1. The MX-1 is um, in storage, but it's really more towards the sort of live environment than a recording environment. That's probably what I would say.